Hi, today we're looking at photographing magpies. You will have heard the saying, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Well, with magpies, that's particularly true. If you've got a magpie in your hand, you're going to attract other magpies. Not just two, you might end up with a dozen of them. Now, I've just seen a dead magpie on the side of the road, a road kill. So I've pulled up and put it inside a plastic bag. I've always got plastic bags in the car ready for road kill. And you might have also heard about magpie wakes, like a magpie funeral. And it's one of these things that's a bit of a myth. Does it really happen? Is it just folklore? Well, it does. Magpies are very interested in other dead magpies. And if you put a dead magpie out on the grass, they will come down to it. Uh, almost 100% almost success rate with magpies coming down to, to dead magpies. Now why, what they're thinking, we don't really know, but in terms of their behaviour, they get very excited, they make a lot of noise. If one magpie comes in first and he makes that very loud rattling noise, that will draw other magpies. You can end up with a dozen of them around the dead one. And they seem very interested in it. They sort of tug it, they, they pull the feathers as if they're trying to resurrect it or wake it up. And they have a quick peck at it, not a hard peck, they just, just look, looks just like a gentle peck and it doesn't last very long in my experience goes on for about five minutes and then they lose interest but i'm going to try and um, illustrate this i'm going to work in the suburbs rather than out in the countryside because that's where our magpies are very numerous today and far more tamer and approachable and we'll see how we get on over the next few days i put the magpie down in eight different locations and I never had to wait more than 10 minutes before a magpie would come in to investigate. But I never really got what I wanted. I wanted a group of magpies, at least half a dozen, and I only ever got them in pairs apart from the first attempt. In the first attempt I went to a local park, I sat on my stool behind my tripod, got the telephoto lens set up, and unfortunately the magpies were thrown by this. They're quite tame and approachable, the magpies there, so long as you're just walking about normally. But as soon as you do something slightly different, they became wary. So I had two magpies initially in that first visit, and within two or three minutes their loud calls had attracted the attention of other magpies, and I could see them flying over towards me but they stayed up in the hedge behind me and slightly to the left, never came down onto the floor. So then I changed my policy. I started trying to find locations where I could park the car and film out of the car window onto a grassy field. And that took a, a bit of hunting around to try and find city parks where I could do that. But it was very successful then, I could film out of the car window and they would take no notice of me. There are lots of superstitions about magpies. They are supposed to be thieves, they will pinch jewellery. But you can imagine if they were to see a, a bright silver or gold ring, they would quite likely pick it up and fly away with it. And then there's the rhyme about one for sorrow and two for joy, etc. There's probably more superstitions about magpies than any other species. This particular bird wasn't very noisy but it sat next to this dead magpie for several minutes, very quietly and peacefully, then climbed up on its back and started to have a good peck. But magpies do groom each other. I have photographed them grooming themselves. And they're very much social birds. So here's some stills pictures I took some years ago of a magpie grooming his friend and then two magpies interacting a different sight same reaction after I'd done the eight sessions the dead magpie was becoming a bit ripe, so I had to throw it away. But I shall be looking out for another one, and it would be nice to try this in the winter. Perhaps I'll get more birds coming down then.
This bird took the pecking a stage further and grabbed hold of the magpie's wing and whipped it around. I don't have my own deep freeze for roadkill currently and sharing the deep freeze in the kitchen with my wife doesn't really lead to matrimonial harmony. I'm going to show you a few stills pictures of magpies now that I took a few years ago. I had this very attractive post with moss on the top of it and it got a nice hollow in the top as well so I was able to fill that with peanuts and the magpies very quickly find it and become regular visitors and then you have the opportunity for flight pictures. Typically you're aiming for a shutter speed of about 2,500 of a second that's a good starting point for birds in flight and I'd like to be doing this again because I've got the Sony A1 and the 200-600mm lens now and I'm keen to try it out. Thanks for watching.